So the my relationship with Bechle is that uh, our company, Secure, is delivering education at the Bechle uh, training center in Munster. Uh, so uh, we're working on different subjects, not only hacking, securing infrastructures in general, but also forensics, uh, Active Directory security, um, and also the uh, education for uh, CISOs. So the main challenge is that when we are working from home, uh, then there are many other uh, things that are happening around us that could be in some kind of way um, causing our attention to go somewhere else than not than just work. Yeah? So for example, we got kids, we've got dogs, cats, and so on. We've got also our home daily tasks. So when we've got that kind of situation, we have to deal with multiple uh, factors at the same time, we might also be more prone to actually um, commit a mistake. So when we see the phishing, we might consider it in a wrong way that is actually trustworthy. We're going to open it, click on something, open something. So that's the major problem problem we had to, uh, while working at work but also we also we borrow, borrow a device for uh, kids family members and they may not be having uh, or going through different security awareness training so they might actually bring danger bring threat to the inside of the organization through that endpoint that the user is using Yeah, so phishing has been all the time the number one attack and mean of transportation for malware and that really has not changed. And the, the reason for that is that uh, phishing, it's a it's a great delivery delivery option. So, for example, user gets an email, um, the way how phishing is written uh, technically violates uh, the, the humans. So a human may trust uh, what is written over there and uh, that phishing may not be stopped by anti-spam, anti-phishing filter because it's done well. That's why it's all the time ongoing. But of course, uh, with time, we're going to be having less of a phishing as a problem because we're going to be able to intelligently recognize the threat. Well, uh, of course, so we've got a phishing as a number one, but the next big threat, I would say it's more adjusted profile to our business profile. So it might be that the next big threat could be, for example, ransomware and the way how it could be introduced to the company. But that actually goes through phishing. Yeah. So phishing is a point of entry for the rest of the things. But the next, I would say, is in general vulnerabilities. So the way how we manage infrastructure. And of course, under that subject, there are many examples. But when we look at that as a whole thing, that will be the way how we manage, uh, for example, our VPN, whether it's up to date or not, our endpoints, our websites, our various services, whether they are tested, secured and so on, because anything that's facing Internet, the outside world could be considered as a point of entry. Uh, you know, uh, I would say that nowadays the biggest problem of the companies is that they do not have an incident response plan that's well written re or tested. Actually, according to McGuffey stats, over 70% um, over of companies, they do not have a, a well written incident response plan or that one at all. And that means that they are not ready to respond to an incident. So when the incident happens, they are stuck. They don't know what to do. They are calling for vendors, maybe even vendors they don't know what to do. So it's always good to have a trustworthy partner that you work with on the incident response because we have to uh, grow our team immediately when the incident happens in order to respond to it in most of the cases. Um, and also have a well-prepared plan. So incident response readiness comes to place that we know what to do at the moment of an incident so we collect the evidence we have a possibility to recover we know who we're going to call we have that skill in place so that we are able to be back to the regular business operation well i would say the same because uh well, or, or actually all of, all of them can be backstabbing us uh when there is a time and place for that, right? So I would say that preparation plays a key role to be ready for anything. Afterwards, any prevention that we're gonna implement, that's I think a key to success as well, because doing anything afterwards is just a game of nerves. So when we gotta pay some activity, it's always to act, plan, implement things when th this is the time. And when the attack is happening, lots of people may simply uh, make mistakes and that might be truly brutal to our infrastructure. 
Yeah, very much, very much like that. So we, we should not be really country specific, yeah, because we got IT, which has no borders, cybersecurity has no borders, and our skill set that has to be more or less the same, at least in one core sphere in cybersecurity that uh, allows us to address basic cybersecurity problems. I totally agree with this, but it's also hard to be up to date. Therefore, we I, I would say something unpopular now, but we we don't have to be always up to date, but we have to be managing the risk properly. And uh, we may not always have the most up to date technology because it also costs money and we have to have a budget, we have to have time to implement it and so on. But we have to be able to evaluate whether it's important for us or not. And this is how we set up priorities nowadays because we are surrounded with so many solutions that impact our business continuity, cybersecurity posture that it's hard for every company to manage it all and to keep it perfect. It's barely like possible. Uh, therefore, uh, managing risk and minimizing the risk, these are the key words that we are using as an answer to not being always up to date with technology. Mm -hmm.